What's up guys, Eric here, welcome to Rant and Review. In this video, we're gonna be talking about The Flash Season 5, episode titled Gold Faced. Yes, I believe that is the worst title we've ever had for a Flash episode. Anyway, the title is Gold Faced, so careful for spoilers if you're not caught up with The Flash this season. You've been warned. Let's get into it. And hey, no Cisco again this week. I just thought I would point it out in case they didn't think we would notice. No Cisco again this week. There's a lot of rumors swirling around about what's going on with Carlos and the character of Cisco. He wasn't there. Are they trying to get us used to something? That's a video for another day. So instead of talking about that, let's talk about the title of this video, which I think I'm going to call it, Is Iris West Allen a Mary Sue? Or Is Iris a Mary Sue, or Iris is a Mary Sue. But before we talk about that, we have to understand what a Mary Sue is. So let's talk about the definition of that, and then we're gonna talk about what happened with Iris in this episode in detail, because it was probably, to me, the most like exciting and then the most frustrating parts of this week of The Flash. Okay, so if you Google what is a Mary Sue, this is what you get. A type of female character who is depicted as unrealistically lacking in flaws or weaknesses. She was not a strong woman so much as an insufferable Mary Sue. And before I get a bunch of people attacking me, yes, there is a male equivalent to this, but it's not been featured on The Flash thus far, as far as I can tell, because everyone except for Iris has shown serious flaws or problems, whereas Iris has continuously not shown those, which is why I think Iris is gonna be a Mary Sue. But I'm gonna throw the question out for you guys. We're gonna talk about what happened in this episode, talk about stuff that's happened with Iris in the past, and then I'm gonna to toss the question out to you. You let me know if you agree or disagree with this um, assertion. Although I know this isn't gonna matter very much to the diehard Candace fans, I'm gonna throw out a little disclaimer before we get into this, simply because I always get attacked for expressing any opinion at all about Iris, whether it's positive or negative. My comments here are about the writers and the character of Iris. It's not about Candace as a person. It is not about Candace as an actress. I think Candace does an amazing job with the material she's given, but ultimately the character of Iris is a product of the writers, the showrunner, and the people behind the scenes. So this is not my opinion of Candace, okay? Just throwing that out there. This is about Iris West, the character specifically as she is written on The Flash. Now you can proceed with the dislikes if you want, but I'm just throwing that out there. So I'm going to assume whether you're a fan of the Iris West Island character or not, it's been fairly obvious that over the last couple of seasons, maybe a bit longer, that the writers and showrunners of The Flash have had no intention of giving Iris a storyline that makes her reporting something that's at the forefront. I don't know if it has an issue with trying to write it or if it just doesn't seem interesting to them, but it does seem like it's something that they really haven't had much interest in. And to me, it's been pretty apparent that this is also frustrating for Candace as during interviews and live conventions, it seems like she's expressed some sort of either disconnect or misunderstanding when it comes to the direction of her character. She's been told that her character is gonna pursue writing and she's gonna be doing the journalism thing and then she doesn't end up doing it. So it makes Candace look like she doesn't know what's going on either, which is why I do believe that all of the issues with Iris stem from the writing department and the showrunners and doesn't have much to do with Candace at all. I think Candace goes on screen every single time or goes in front of the camera every time and works her hardest to make this character uh, fleshed out on screen for all of us watching at home. So I think it goes without saying that after last week's episode and finding out that they were in fact gonna be pushing this journalism story arc for Iris, uh, giving her the publication and allowing her to go back out in the field again, I think that was one of the best parts of last week's episode in terms of like, I didn't like how they fast-tracked it, but I did love the direction of it. And then in this week's episode, we got to see her actually applying that. And early on when she's doing these interviews and she's asking questions and she's following leads, all of this is stuff that got me really excited for what was gonna happen. Um, I was thinking, what are we gonna do? Is she gonna gather all this information? Is she gonna take it back to the team? I mean, I was just super happy to see this. She was cracking this guy like an egg. This is the Iris West Allen that I've wanted, and this was everything that I've asked for right at the beginning of the episode. We're coming out the gate 
all guns a blazing. I was just super excited. And I'm thinking as being a previous leader for Team Flash for, you know, the entirety of season four. And even before that, before Barry came back, she was sort of taking the lead. She's going to gather this information up. She's going to put it all together and she's going to go back to the team and come up with some sort of plan so that they can work together to not only get this information on Cicada for her to put in her blog or in a publication, but they're also going to use it to sort of stop him to take all this information she's gathered and use it against him as a weakness. This seems like the most logical direction for her character. And I was pretty sure that was what we were going to get. Even though we got the preview of her like going to his house and stuff, I thought, well, she's go there's going to be some other plan. There's going to be a plan B. She's going to have backup because Iris would definitely not go to his house by herself without any sort of backup plan. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where I would totally be wrong. Not only did Iris take this information, keep it to herself, and go investigate it by herself, but everything leading up to her encountering Cicada in his own home is like a series of events that just should not have happened. Iris has learned so much over the years from being a reporter, being involved with her dad with the police department, and being involved with Team Flash this entire scenario, everything leading up to the big confrontation between her and this character, none of it adds up. These are things that Iris would not or should not do based on everything that she's known over the years. All the training she's had, confrontations she's had with other characters, things that she believes in as a character. This is taking Iris and taking, you know, and pushing her back two seasons to an Iris that we don't really you know, this Iris, this version of Iris should not exist anymore. The careless one, the one that's not thinking, the one that's doing things impulsively and not getting punished for those impulsive decisions. Had this been any other character, they would have been in big trouble, but not Iris. Iris is a character who's been portrayed as perfect by the writers and the showrunner. She's a character that especially in this season, that there's nothing that she can do that has any consequence. Everything leads to a positive resolution. She has no flaws. And this is a huge problem for Iris. But before we get into that, before we get into Iris has no flaws, let's talk about the fact that she broke into this house, which is the big thing. Like she gets this information, she goes to this address, and she breaks in. And why this makes no sense in season five compared to the Iris that we knew from just last season. So you may be saying to yourself, Iris broke into Cicada's house. No big deal. What difference does that make? That's what we have to do to defeat him. That's how powerful he is. We do whatever it takes. Or that's what reporters do because they're trying to get the scoop. And I would tell you, let's go back to season four, episode seven, where Barry actually breaks into DeVoe's house and Iris has to sort of bring him back from those bad decisions. Just to refresh your memory, this is the episode where Barry uses his powers to go into DeVoe's house, look around and try to pick up clues. And ultimately because of things that he does there, things that happen with Joe, all of that leads to a restraining order against Barry from DeVoe for doing these things. And Iris has to talk to Barry more than once in this episode and say, this is not you. This is not who you are. You shouldn't be doing these things. We need to pull you back from this. You know, this is not my husband. This is not my, or my fiance at this point. This is not who you are as a person. Iris knows that he shouldn't be doing this, that these things do not lead to a positive end for him, that they're things that basically are beneath his character. And this is what Iris does in the seventh episode of season four, meaning that she has gone far beyond, you know, the thoughts of just breaking and entering and doing things illegally to get to a resolution. Iris doesn't think that way anymore. And yeah, that's just one example compared to what she did in this week's episode. But talking about the morality and the character of Iris, there's plenty more examples out there that show she has evolved as a character over the years. And this leads me to the next thing that Iris probably wouldn't do based on previous things that, that has happened. And that would be going to Cicada's house by herself without a plan B. This falls back to her being the leader of Team Flash. During her period as the leader, she had to make a lot of tough decisions. And one of the things that she did as leader was there was like the buddy system. She always had people backing up people. You always had to have somebody on comms or somebody who knows where you are or something along those lines so that everybody is safe. However, in this situation, she decides to go out on her own without any sort of backup plan. There is no plan B. Iris West Allen is much too smart based on what we've seen over the seasons to go into this so blindly without a plan B. There's a lot of options here. 
The two biggest that I can think of, which should have been no brainers, is the silent alarm that's built into their phones or a breaching device. Either one of those could have been used in the scenario. And you say, well, she didn't have her purse on her. That's true, at the beginning she didn't, but then she does eventually get her purse. She has her bag when she's walking out of the house, and at that point, she never tries to alert anybody or to breach out of the house, which leads me to believe that either the writers forgot that there's a early alert system, or they forgot that the breaching devices are an option. Either way, they forgot about both of them. Not to mention maybe a meta dampening device, just put it in your purse, because what happens if you get there and you have the opportunity to put it on his wrist? Like that wasn't even an option either. Like you didn't even think about that. Instead, we had this awkward like conversation between Cicada and Iris. And by the way, Chris Klein again was absolutely horrible in the scene. He just does not, uh, just not working for me as a big bad. There's a problem with that. We're going to talk about that in this video as well. We got a lot of things to cover in this video, but let's stay on track here. So all of those options were there and I'm sure there's probably more that I'm just not thinking of. But those are things that could have happened, but none of that happens. And so she gets cornered by Cicada, who finds her out. He realizes that she's there. Uh, she's not doing this interview on lead in the water. She's actually there for him. Now, up until this point, Cicada has been pretty indiscriminate when it comes to the people he's going after. If he knows he needs to get you, he doesn't really care. He just goes after you and kills you, or at least tries to do that. And that's just the way he is. However, in this scene... He sees Iris running, he's probably less than 10 feet away, and instead of taking her out once he's established that she is a threat, he throws his dagger at the door to block the door instead of taking Iris out. So why did he, why is this even a thing? He's disabling the door, but not her. I don't, what is going on here? And you could say, well, maybe he had a reason to stop her. Maybe he wanted information, but... What information would he want? He's never ever, that's not his MO. He doesn't get information. He literally just takes people out. That's why he's been such a somewhat lackluster villain for most people is the fact that there's not much there. So in this scenario, blocking the door is totally out of character for him, except for the fact that this is Iris and Iris, no matter what mistakes she makes in decision-making, ultimately she can do no wrong really. And then we get that moment, the moment that has irritated me to the core that sparked me to make this video right now the way I'm making it. And that is the fight scene between Cicada and Iris. Now, Cicada is a character we've seen who has extremely powerful abilities. He's super strong, he's durable, he's fast, not to mention he's got a dagger he control, he can put up force fields, he can do all kinds of crazy things. But somehow, some way, Iris is able to struggle against Cicada. Iris West Allen is able to put up a fight, which is just crazy in itself. Not only is Iris able to survive and escape, but she also is able to stab Cicada with a pin, thus finding a weakness for him to take back to the team. Now, do you see why this whole Mary Sue thing is an issue and why it's so frustrating? Because you have characters like Iris who are shown to be so perfect that even when they make questionable decisions, there are no repercussions for them. And she was by herself. There's no one else on Team Flash, no one, even people with powers that would go up against Cicada by themselves and walk away the way she did, have him struggle with the fight with her when she has no powers herself. It's just unbelievable. It's absolutely unbelievable. And I mean, ultimately, this is what makes me feel that Iris West Allen is a Mary Sue character. There are no repercussions. There's no punishments for anything that she does wrong anymore, especially in this season. And it makes her character hard to like for a lot of people. There's so many people online that argue about why people don't like Iris or why they don't connect with this character. It has nothing to do with the character itself. Iris West Allen could arguably be one of the best characters on the show for everybody if she's done in a way that makes her believable and relatable for everyone. Having a human character that does these crazy things and gets away with them unscathed comes across as being a Mary Sue or a character that makes them unlikable or unbelievable. Let's look at like, just change it up a little bit and look at like a character. So let's look at Superman, for example, even Supergirl. The hard thing about those characters are they're so powerful 
that you have to make them relatable. And that's one of the toughest things when it comes to a Kryptonian is their power level or any character like that in general who's that strong is you have to make them, you have to make the human side of them seem relatable. Otherwise people don't connect with those characters. They're not very interesting because they're so powerful that there's literally nothing that they can do or that they can do anything basically. Whereas you see Iris, a human character who is not only never really punished for any bad decisions, but you look at her jump off a building and save her husband. Or you see her in this episode where she fights off a metahuman who has strength levels with at least that of Mon-El. And he's durable, powerful, sadistic, somehow doesn't throw the dagger at her when she's running for the door, instead throws it at the door. Um, she makes tons of bad decisions leading up to this. This whole segment of scenes with Iris could have been great. They started off so good to me with her doing the reporting and stuff. If she would have taken all of that information back to Team Flash and said, look, this is what I found. I think we can beat him this way or we can go pick him up here or I need backup here or, or check for me here. If I'm not back by this time, then come looking for me. Just something along those lines. This is not giving Iris the credit that she deserves. If you are a fan of Iris, then you should want her to be smarter. This scene was set up to drive the plot and totally throws away any character development that Iris has had over the last couple of seasons specifically in season four when she was leader of team flash she would have never done this she would have chastised so many people on the team for doing something so absolutely reckless yet here we are and it wasn't like the scene between her and cicada was that good she was driving the scene because chris klein is not very good as this character Iris is literally driving the scene. And I think Candace did a great job in the scenes, like as far as the acting and the delivery and the emotions and everything, I thought she was fine. But this is just not, this is why Iris West Allen, to me, is a Mary Sue character and it's a problem. If you wanna make Iris believable, then show her getting some sort of, I don't know, blowback from the decision she's making. Like she's making decisions, things are going on and nothing is happening. Like her argument with Wells, Nothing ever came of that. Nothing ever came of that. It wasn't like he went to somebody else or that, you know, it, it pulled over into something that happened in the next episode. It was completely like a standalone, let me be mad at him, and then we're just going to completely forget about it. No repercussions for it. No fallout from it. Nothing. And here we are with this week's episode where she does probably, in my opinion, the most stupid thing that any character has done this season, which is go out to try and face off against Cicada by herself, because ultimately she had to know there was a chance that she was going to come in face to face with him because she had the right information. She knew that she could have at least at the very least shared it with the rest of the team, but she did not. And I thought that was a little bit weird. And the fact that Cisco wasn't there made it even more strange because he couldn't help her like get back to where she needs to go. If he needed to breach in and save her or not, he couldn't vibe anything. There's just, there was just nothing there for her to latch onto in terms of storyline outside of this particular segment of scenes. And so for me, that makes uh, Iris West Island a Mary Sue. And it really brought the whole episode down because this was such an integral part of what happened this week. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Now you may say, Eric, but some of the, Things, some of the decisions that she made in this episode show that she does have flaws. Well, no, not really, because the decisions that she made are decisions that Iris would have not made. The writers put her, put those decisions in place to get her here, to get her here, I should say, <laughs> where she's facing off against Cicada. Iris would have never broken to that house. Iris would have never done any of this without notifying the rest of the team or having a plan B. All of those could be considered character flaws if she were actually punished for them, but she was not. She was allowed to not only get away, but find out information on Cicada that the rest of the team did, could not find out. Not to mention, while all this is going on, the stuff with Barry and Ralph ended up being pretty much a big failure, I think, and if you look at it from what they were trying to do. So Iris succeeds, everybody else fails, and that's really kind of where we are right now. So in the comments below, I know I spent a lot of time on this, but this is a very important part of the episode for me, and it's something that's been bugging me for a while. And this episode sort of just, it was a perfect example of these issues. And I think if you look at it from with a open mind and open perspective, you'll see there's definitely something going on here. That's not right. So let me know in the comments below. Do you think Iris West Allen is a Mary Sue? Do you think she's a character that has been shown to be too perfect, at least for the, for this season, for season five, uh, where it's making her unbelievable. If you want to give her unbelievable stuff like this, 
then you have to give her some character flaws that are natural, that stick. Not just character flaws to get her from one scene to the next, because that's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's just going to make people resent her. And anybody who's fans of this character, they have to, like, you have to put an objective eye on this. You have to. All right, let's move over to the stuff with Barry and Ralph. Okay, so the main story in this week's episode was that Barry and Ralph have to go undercover into this criminal underworld to get a piece of tech that they need to defeat Cicada. So uh, Caitlin has come up with a early version of the Metacure, which has changed, by the way. Apparently it doesn't target dark matter anymore. Now it actually targets the meta genome, is what she said, I believe. Um, but that doesn't like, I don't understand. We're gonna have to do a separate video on that altogether because I want to go back and listen to it one more time to get the specifics. But either way, they need Cicada to be still for like a minute so they could let this, you know, Medicare work its magic. Uh, unfortunately they don't have any way to do that, which seems strange to me because the, you know, they have access to Argus and all these other places, but needless to say, they don't have any other idea except to go in this criminal underworld and find this device, which is what leads to this buddy cop thing between Ralph and Barry, which I actually really enjoyed. I thought this part of the episode was a lot of fun. I love the banter between these two characters, although there were some over the top moments. I think overall, this was a successful portion of the episode. Uh, the only thing that stood out to me as being a little strange in terms of setting this up is that everyone seems to have meta dampening devices and they can put them on anyone, including the flash, but they can't get them on Cicada. Our heroes cannot get them on the main big bad. So that's a little strange to me, but ultimately I thought all of this was fine. The gold face character was interesting. Apparently he was, I mean, I know the comic book version is different from the one on the show, but from what I could tell on the show, um, he had gold under his skin. Maybe his skeleton was made of gold or he had gold. I don't know. It was weird because then when he got shocked at the end, the gold melted out of his eyes and they were like, oh, he's still alive. But literally it looked like he was melted. So I'm not really sure exactly like what, what his powers were supposed to be. But uh, either way, I thought this was a very interesting portion of the episode. Um, I, I really enjoyed the banter between uh, Barry and Ralph and Ralph is slowly becoming one of my favorite parts of season five, which I think is really interesting because I did not like him at all in season four. I was one of the people who just said, I, I wish he would go. I can't stand him. Uh, something that did sort of stand out to me as being a little bit odd was the gunfight we had with our characters where they were able to just go around and just take out all of these thugs and Ralph was able to fight, which I said back when he was facing off against Cicada, he didn't put up much of a fight. And this is why the Iris thing kind of bugged me because she was able to, to fight back a little bit and then Ralph wasn't. Either way, they were able to do that much too easily. It was like Star Wars type thing where the bad guys just can't hit anybody. Um, it's kind of cliche. They mentioned Red Dead Redemption 2. Don't really know how that applies here. Um, not really the same thing. It's not a first person shooter, but okay. Um, anyway, <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, so I, I like this part of the episode. I would say this is probably my favorite portion, uh, this week, but let's talk about the stuff between Wells and, um, Nora, because I think there's a little bit of issue with that story as well. So I would say to the team behind the flash this season, it's probably not a good look when the most exciting thing about this season is the information that we're getting from the future with Nora and Eobard and all of that. And that your main big bad cicada, maybe grace is it the most exciting part? And you could argue that maybe Eobard is technically the big bad because his meddling with Nora and time is what made Cicada come up anyway. Um, so maybe it's all connected. Maybe that's the thing. But we get this beginning segment where Nora's complaining about Wells and how he's like, you know, figuring her out. And so Eobard says, distract him with love. You know, make him look in another direction so he's not looking at you, which kind of works, but in my opinion, doesn't really work. You see, in case you forgot because it hasn't been bashed over our heads all season, Nora can't do anything right. Nora literally makes mistakes. That's, that's all she does. She's a liar and she makes mistakes. So it should come as no surprise that the plan that she has, even though ultimately it sort of works in the end, I don't think it's going to play out the way she wants it to because it's supposed to have been a distraction, but it literally takes up a bunch of her time 
in this week's episode to get the ball rolling. And I know I brought this up a lot last season, but I wanna talk about it again because I think it's very important and it undermines a lot of what happened in season three by not addressing it now. So why is it that Wells, any version of Wells since HR can now go out and walk around in the city, no problem at all? Can we please like address that? Because the entire setup of season three with HR, you know, disguising himself as Iris uh, had to do with the fact that they had this face changing technology that he had to use because he wasn't allowed to go out in public because of the fact that he was Wells. Whereas here we've gotten to the point now where no one seems to care about that. And yes, I understand it would be annoying to do it every single season, but you have to give a reason why. There has to be a, like, how can he just walk around? You know, within canon, he shouldn't just be walking around like this. I don't think they're ever going to address it, but it bothers me every time I see it. So Nora's big plan to distract Wells is to bring him face to face with Earth One's version of one of his many ex-wives. And so that's going to distract him. And although it seems kind of clumsy at first, inevitably it ends up he's talking to her and, you know, getting to know her and everything. And so we have to deal with like the council of ex-wives. And yeah, I mean, this is quite funny to see all these different versions and for him dealing with owing them all money and how he broke their hearts and blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Except this brings up another problem for me. You guys know I nitpick. I think about stuff sometimes too much. I'm going too deep here. This is down the rabbit hole. But if all these ex-wives are able to communicate to him through the multiverse, does that mean the multiverse is just common knowledge? everywhere else except for earth one or 38 like is the idea and the concept of multiverse travel something that even like an old west version of earth one would know about that they would understand and you could argue that maybe they know because of wells but it just seems like any time we need stuff to happen when it comes to like this type of tech people just seem to be totally understanding of it that it doesn't seem to be a big deal to them and um you know here we go in a situation where nora was just able to contact all of these people across the multiverse. I don't know. I know I'm nitpicking quite a bit with that, but it did bug me a little bit because this portion of the story was supposed to be about distracting Wells. And instead it distracted me with just all the stuff that seemed to go wrong with it. And although she did seem like she succeeded at the end uh, by getting him to like change direction, it's not going to last very long. And she's ultimately going to have to tell the truth. So this is all just pointless filler stuff. With all that being said, this is where I'm going to wrap up my review of the episode of The Flash titled Goldface. So as you can tell from my review and my thoughts on most of this week's Flash, I wasn't very happy with it. It just was kind of a meh episode. Iris, that whole storyline, that whole portion of this week just brought it down for me. I didn't mind the stuff with Ralph Barry. I thought that was a lot of fun, even though there was some Issues with it, I thought overall it was kind of fun. The stuff with Nora and Wells was okay. It wasn't horrible. It did make me question some of the canon that we've learned over the years. But the stuff with Iris just was like, just doesn't really work for me. And Cisco was missing again, so there's that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to say this episode to me was painfully just average. There wasn't a lot in it that got me excited. I don't know what we're going to be doing with The Flash come next season but I just feel like there needs to be some oomph. There needs to be something big and there's nothing really big going on right now. Like the big mysteries that we have just week by week, we keep getting like very little of it. Like the stuff with, with Eobard in the future and Nora and the ticking clock on his wall and what's going on with her in the future. I know next week's episode looks good, but we've been fooled by trailers before. The Inception ep episode was another one where I felt like the trailers were really good and the episode, the execution of the episode wasn't that great. So I'm going to have to score this week's episode of The Flash um, a 7 out of 10. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Um, I don't think it wasn't, un again, it wasn't unwatchable. I feel like I have to keep saying that over and over when it comes to The Flash. It is a totally serviceable episode. But when you look at the bare bones of it and you look at what's happening with these characters and what's going on with their, with the storyline thus far, you realize there's a lot of problems and I can't just keep looking the other way when it comes to these problems. I have to say something about it. And to me, Iris West Allen is a character who they're so close to getting her right. They are so close to getting her right with this reporter storyline. Just the way they wrapped up that story and the decisions they had her make in that final act were just so poor I was just like, yes, Iris. And then no, Iris. Just that's how I felt really at the end of the day with this. So 
We're going to have to wait and see what's going to happen. Um, anyway, that's where I'm going to end this video. So you guys let me know over here. Go over here and let me know if you agree with my score, the 7 out of 10. Too high, too low. Do you agree? Give me your thoughts down in the comments below. I want to know what you think about Iris uh, being a Mary Sue character. Again, it's not just like she's the example on this series. There's examples of men and women on other shows who are the same. Iris, though, has had a big issue with that this season. It's become a huge problem. Not Candace. Not her fault at all. It is the writers and the showrunners and the people behind the scenes. Although that's not going to deflect the hate. Just come on. Give it to me. I know I'm going to get it anyway. I just can't do it anymore. I can't I can't keep ignoring it. I have to say something about it when it comes up. And it just it was so prevalent in this week's episode. So that's it, you guys. Uh, have a great evening. I'm sorry these videos were so late this week. I'm feeling a little bit better. Hoping by tomorrow I'll feel even more better than I do now. Um, is that a thing? More better. I, I don't think that's proper English. Just ignore it. Am I going to chop that out? Probably not. Goodbye.